Hello, in this video I will show you how to use JS placement to quickly create gribbles and R surface detailing to use in your 3D software. This is JS placement, which is a free JavaScript based software. I leave a link in the de description below to download it. And uh, after you open it, you will get this main screen here. You can click on this icon on the top left corner and you have many options. These options are all act map which you can create. The new ones are the one which are collected in the JS placement 2 menu, but you also have other options which we will go through in this video. Let's start from the JS placement 2. Just left click on this box to generate a height map based on these settings here. We are now in the classic set, which are mainly grids and big clusters. If we change it to, let's say, big data, we have this kind of features. Crab pack, they are mostly hardware and CDs, this kind of stuff here. We can change the number of things on the screen by using the iteration slider. We can also change the dimension of the sprites so we can have smaller objects in our height map. We can also change the number of background objects, but I think three is a good number. And of course, if you are not happy with the result, you can click generate to generate another height map. Now, before saving our height map to use in Blender. Let's take a look at the other options here. We have Velvet. Velvet is a psychedelic generator, as you can see here. It's useful maybe for abstract things, abstract works, or uh, futuristic cyberpunk uh, scenes, this kind of stuff. We have Wires, as the name implies, they are wires which you can change the directions and other things. And then we have a dot grid, which is basically the dots that you can see on the motherboards and other hardware devices. Let's go back to our JS placement 2 and uh, let's generate two height maps to use in Blender. So my first one will be, I think, a big data. I will bump up the iteration a little bit and uh, we have some options here. We can uh, give it a color so we can save a color map. For example, if I click on this, we have now red and white and black colors. This one is another variation. Let's say I want this one. Let's save our height map, which will be in 8K resolution. If you want, you can resize it in a 2D software like Photoshop or Affinity Photo. I will save it, uh, I give it a name like gribble1.png because by default, uh, it won't give you a file format. I save the color also. I will call it gribble1color in G. Okay, so let's generate another height map and let's save the height map. Gribble 2 in G and the color. Gribble 2 color in G. Okay, so we can close JS placement and here we are in Blender. Now in Blender, I made two planes. This one will have a displacement. In fact, I subdivide it a little bit, as you can see. This one is just a simple plane with no subdivisions. I'm using cycles for this one. And uh, let's jump to the shading panel. I also added an HDRI to visualize the scene. And uh, let's create a new material. Now, for this one, I will show you how to use the 
height maps generated before as a normal map or pump map. Okay, so first of all, let's uh, click on the principal shader and key, not Wrangler, which is a free add-on. If you don't have it, I highly recommend to install it. it just uh, go to the add-on menu in Blender, search for node Wrangler and enable it. Okay, so let's click on add texture setup and it will automatically create this kind of setup for us, which contains the texture coordinate, mapping node and image texture. The plane already has an UV map because it's just a plane, so we can use the UV input. Now let's, uh, for this image texture, let's uh, find our first height map which is this one, Gribble 1 PNG. And now, first of all, let's uh, give it uh, a darker color. You switch to non-color for the color space because it's a height map, not a roughness or uh, color map. Also, Shift A, uh, Vector, Bump. Okay, we can connect the bump to our no normal. We can simply connect the color input to our height input of a bump. And you can already see the effect that has on our plane. However, this is kind of like too simple. So let's create a math node because I want to control the strength of the two height maps because right now we only have one height map, which is fine but I will add our second height map. So let's duplicate this, Shift D. Let's uh, click on this number to make it a unique copy. Otherwise, uh, if I change some settings uh, in this node here, it will also change the same settings in this one and vice versa. Then let's connect the vector input of our mapping node to the vector input of our image texture. And then uh, let's find our second height map, Gribble 2, open image, color space to non-color. Let's duplicate this math node two times. I will connect the color input of our first image to the first input of this math node. And I will change the function to multiply. And uh, this one also multiply and I, I'll do the same thing for the input of a Gribble 2 to the first input of my math node. And then I will connect the two math node to my add node. And finally, the value to the height. We basically want to control the strength of our two height maps. If I want, uh, to use the first height map only, I can change the value of my multiply node to 1. And now I have the height map correctly working. With these two nodes, you can control the strength of the two height maps. You can go from 0 to 1, where 0 means no height map at all, so 0 strength, and 1 is the maximum. So if I want both height map, I can change the value of both nodes to one. And now I have both height maps working together. This is because it's a multiply function. So by connecting the first map to the first input, here we have, let's say our texture, which is multiplied by, by this value so if I multiply it by zero, the value is zero, so I have nothing. If I multiply it with one, I have one, which means the full height map. If I want only half details, I can choose like 0.5 and I have half details. Maybe for the other height map, I want a 20% strength, I can 
simply input 0 0.2, maybe even 0 0.1, okay? And then we simply use an add function to simply combine them together, and then they go into the bar. So that's how you set up the bar. Let's also connect our color maps by creating an image text tool, actually two image text tool. For the first one, I will find my ripple one color, color space to sRGB because it's a color map. And for the second one, I will load my second color map. Vector, obviously, we want the V, so I connect them. And then if you only want the color of the first one, you can connect it here, but we can do the same thing. If you want both, you can use an add function. Actually, let's use a mix RGB. You can also use the add, but it's better to use the mix RGB. So well, let's connect the two colors. Here we go. We have both colors. We can choose to have only one, only the second one, or only the first one, or a mix of both by choosing 0.5. Of course, you can add maybe a color ramp to further enhance and modify the textures. Now, I will show you also a trick which you can apply for every height map, really. Let's disconnect this one. Let's say you want more contrast, but you don't want to colorize the gribbles. You only want black and white. So you can create a color ramp. It's connected to the base color. For the factor here, I will connect it to my add math function, which is the two height maps combined together. And then, as you can see, we already have more contrast. Of course, you can move the slider however you want. If you want more black, if you want more white, but that's only for visualization purposes while you are working on your height map. Okay, so that's how you use the bump. But let's say you want the displacement. So let's hide this plane and let's bring up this other plane. I will connect the same material However, instead of using the bump, delete it, I will need a displacement node. So shift A, vector, displacement. Let's connect the output, displacement output to the input of the material output here. And I will connect the add node to the height. Nothing is happening. That's because we must enable in the material properties here the displacement option. So we go to the settings, surface, displacement, displacement only, or displacement and bump, if you also have a bump. Now let's change the scale, 0.1 maybe. We also need way more subdivision, so I will add subdivision surface, simple, can apply it. As you can see, we have a displacement uh, working correctly. And uh, of course, the more subdivision you have, the better the result will be. Let's uh, wait a little bit until it refines it. And as you can see, we have all the details. This can be very useful for maybe spaceships or any kind of hard surface detailing, maybe panel detailing. If there is too much going on, can obviously going back here, and let's say I only want 0.1 and maybe I want the full value here and we already have a different result which looks like a factory or an industrial site is the scale oh yeah this is, looks really really good it could also be a motherboard maybe a futuristic motherboard And of course, you can load in the color maps. Okay. Of course, you can also add an emissive shader. You can do whatever you want, but that's the general workflow to use JS placement and uh, any kind of height map really in Blender. I hope you enjoyed this video. If that's the case, leave a like to support the channel. Subscribe to stay up to date 
with the latest contents. If you have any question, comment below and I'll see you in the next one.